Altcoins are looking like they're ready to break out and have a beautiful alt season here. And this is as Bitcoin is at that hallowed land of 50K. What we know for sure is that two things are happening to the market. Alts are setting up for a parabolic run and Bitcoin is entering into a volatility squeeze. This is really bullish for both altcoins and Bitcoin. And we know that this market has been looking like a powder keg for the last few months. So if you guys are excited to hear all about altcoin DeFi season, as well as pretty much the entire market about ready to go postal, then go ahead, destroy that like button. Remember each and every comment on this video is entered to win your own hardware wallet. As always, we're bringing you the newest and truest in the space, and we're going to start covering the ultimate low cap gems. It is low cap gem season where the right altcoin pick could lead to some astronomical gains. That's just how the game works. I don't make the rules, but make sure that you're subscribed with that bell notification on because it's once again, the magical time to call out these low cap gems as they have the potential to make insane runs. So make sure you're subscribed with that bell notification on so you get all my videos at the earliest possible juncture. The opportunity cost of taking your attention off of this market right now is horrific. Don't let yourself sleep on the next big thing. With that said, let's dive in. So first of all, let's go over this article showing the crypto money flow cycle. This is an article here by Rect Capital. Highly recommend Rect Capital. It's a great source of information. Now, the question here is how does the money flow in crypto? I just like this, the really simple infographic. First of all, the money comes in from fiat into Bitcoin typically. The more and more it's coming from fiat into large caps or specifically Ethereum, that's at least how I've been doing a lot of my money flow over the last sort of year and a half is because everything I want, I need Ethereum for. So I typically just skip the Bitcoin stage and I just buy Ethereum. But at this point, I usually don't cycle off any more fiat because I'm mostly just all in crypto. But anyway, that's a different topic. The point is that usually Bitcoin and fiat are the ones that interact the most. And then once you're in Bitcoin, you usually move into large caps, mid caps, and then low caps, and then it recycles back to Bitcoin. And so what you'll see is the cyclical push of altcoins and Ethereum, and then everything starts moving. Everyone starts doubting Bitcoin. Bitcoin dominance shrinks, and then all of a sudden, all the money piles back into Bitcoin to ride that next wave up. Now, Bitcoin is the most risk-averse asset. It's the most stable and the least risky asset in crypto. That said, compared to the rest of the world, it's still extremely, extremely risky. So now returning back to this, it really looks like we're entering into this altcoin season. And this is right as Bitcoin is at this critical level. But Bitcoin needs a lot of oomph. It needs a lot of strength to get over this hump and make it to all time highs and beyond. And we're going to show you how Bitcoin is entering into a volatility squeeze. So my prediction is that we're going to see this massive altcoin breakout. It's going to last for a few weeks. And then we're going to see alts pile back into Bitcoin for the next wave. And then we're going to ride the cycles again. But knowing this, let's look here and you can see I've been calling Chainlink for a breakout now for quite some time. I was calling it really hard around 20 bucks. We're almost 2x from there. But it looks like Chainlink, especially according to Michael, who I think is a very reliable source, is on its way here back up towards, you know, all time highs essentially, right? for lack of a better term. The fact here is that things are looking very, very good for Chainlink, and Chainlink tends to be a leader, a sort of canary in the coal mines for DeFi. So DeFi is looking ripe for another explosion. It's been getting completely crushed, and it's just been an accumulation phase over the last pretty much year or so. It really hasn't had this massive bullish outbreak like we saw in 2020. And so funding is also reaching excessive levels here now uh, since the first time in early May. Funding essentially is the price to enter and exit different long and short positions. So when funding gets expensive, it means that people are starting to be very leveraged, which means that the greed is coming back into the ecosystem. Greed is good because it acts as rocket fuel, but it can also create some wild volatility and it can also create some price collapses. So greed is pretty much a double-edged sword here. So just be careful using leverage. I don't use leverage. I just pretty much buy spot. I hold things, I stake things. Um, and then the only leverage things I do is if I borrow against those, like for example, Ethereum, when I borrow against my Ethereum to borrow more UST to then lend that or to buy more Ethereum, that's the leverage I would use, but I don't actually use leverage longs. It's too risky for me. In Speaking of DeFi, I told you this was going to happen. I told you this was a sure bet and easy freaking money. And I was calling this all throughout the bear cycle that convex finance was just wildly, wildly undervalued. And we could see, I was telling you while this was bottoming out here, I said, look, this is an amazing project. I told you about it before it even made this run up here. But if you missed that, you could have easily accumulated down here and had this massive surge in the last day or so. Here, let's get to the 24 hour chart. You can see this massive pump up to 1494, so about 15 bucks here 
We were telling you about this thing at two dollars, so about 850 percent growth here since uh, you know in the last month or two, and that's because Convex's fundamentals are just so ridiculous. They have almost eight billion dollars in TVL, which means that compared to their 20, uh, their 295 million dollar uh, market cap, it's a 0.17. Or, or actually a 0.04 circulating market cap to TVL ratio. It's a phenomenal, phenomenal uh, combination of really the only fundamentals that we have here in DeFi land. So this was a screaming freaking buy. And to me, it's still wildly undervalued. Let's look at this. So Curve TVL is 14 billion. Convex TVL is 8 billion. Curve market cap is a billion dollars. Convex market cap is 220 million. So you have this more than half the TVL, but only one fifth the market cap. And in my opinion, Curve is wildly undervalued. Look, Curve is a pretty complex mechanism. You need to really use it to understand it. But it's got this magical, magical resource of allowing for all kinds of huge liquidity, highly liquid trading between stable coins. And it's pretty much a core primary or primitive here in DeFi land. And Convex actually is one of the best things to come out of Curve. It's the best thing since YFI to borrow the actual phrasing of some of my DeFi big brain friends. And what you need to know is CRV is getting all kinds of airdrops and bribes. This whole sets of power games are being deployed to collect it. It's the heart of Ethereum DeFi. Uh, I definitely agree with this thread. I think that CRV is one of the key elements here in Ethereum DeFi. It is possibly the thing I'm most bullish on as far as like DeFi primitives like Compound and Aave and Curve. I really love what Curve does. But of course, it requires so much to explain it that this would be, I'd be Charlie from uh, Always Sunny if I tried to explain it here on the fly. So uh, let me know in the comment section below if you want a dedicated Curve episode. But just know Curve is ultra bullish and Convex is the little brother of Curve that in my opinion is even more undervalued and su super, super bullish, all right? So seeing Convex uh, pump like this, seeing Convex explode like this, uh, like it has been doing, and I told you it would, again, all you have to do is subscribe and put that notification bell on and you can get this information first. You don't have to be chasing this pump after the fact. You could have loaded up with me here at two and three bucks. So make sure you have that notification bell on. Now, another project that I told you was meaning business here and is about to release their public dApp is Donkey Finance. Now, I'm a big holder of Donkey. I'm a big holder of Curve, just complete disclosure here. And Donkey actually came through the Super Starter program on Super Farm. The reason why is that this is a really compelling offering, copy farming. Copy farming is a really, really sexy thing to do here because finding the next best yield farming opportunities, there's always something that's gonna give you a bajillion percent APY, but only for a split second. And so having the ability to copy farm the big brains who are finding these opportunities and, and extracting maximum value from them, well, that's a huge, huge deal. And so this whole copy copy farming thing, especially as yields fly through the roof during a bullish period, this is going to become extremely popular. So seeing it return to all-time highs to me would be a natural evolution for Donkey. Um, and again, uh, the IDO price, I think, was 12 cents here. So it's already here at about 10x again for the IDO uh, people who are actually able to get into the IDO. But look, you were able to get in here at pretty much IDO prices during the correction. And this is the stuff that you want to look for. When I say never buy things exactly after the IDO, it's because you end up with a lot of these price charts that look like this. And then you get things at rock bottom bargain basement prices. And look, you could already be up 10x here, not quite 10x, but you get my point. The point is I see Donkey as very, very bullish over the next few weeks and months. And looking at DeFi, there is just a lot of gains here. We see RGT, another darling of the channel, which we covered, I believe, starting at $4 back at the beginning of the year, up here back at 20 bucks, making a nice recovery. Convex, a big winner. Ave Old, not sure why the old Ave is pumping. Um, and IDEX, not sure why IDEX is pumping either. But Keeper Dow with a nice pump today, getting back to healthy levels here. Again, it just feels, it feels as though DeFi is back. Another favorite of the channel, Injective Protocol, making some nice recoveries here. And it just feels as though things are heating up for another very nice period in DeFi. Alchemix is another project that people know and love. Again, if you guys don't know how to invest in this stuff, an easy way to get a piece of DeFi, if you're not going to be low cap hunting, if you want to more set it and forget it, is to buy things like Sushi, which I'm massively bullish on or buy things like the DPI, not financial advice, make your own decisions here, guys, but the DeFi perp index or the DPI on indexed finance here. I'll find it for you guys. Here you go, the DPI or the DeFi Pulse Index here. This is a basket of DeFi protocols. And so you could sort of buy into it.
into a diversified bucket here. It's one way to do it. Again, you should always form your own strategies. Another project that has been getting a ton of hype by a ton of big brains that I uh, am a big fan of here is, of course, Tokamak. We covered this project weeks and weeks ago uh, saying, hey, look, this is getting a lot of hype. I'm not sure it solves everything, but it's an interesting solution to liquidity problems in DeFi. And look at this thing, just steady gains over the last few weeks, about a 3x from where we covered it. And this is why I said the rotation into DeFi was much needed. I told you guys the rotation into DeFi was going to be easy money because NFTs were feeling really frothy. And although NFTs will continue to be a source of gains, just like I can't turn my back on any of these NFTs, I'm really enjoying them. But the reality is, is that Tokimak and these other DeFi projects are proving that DeFi is making its way back. And if you think they're going to stop now, no, we're going to look for all-time highs on those who got beaten down, and we're going to look for incredible multiples on top of it. That's right. DeFi fall feels like the flavor that is coming to the crypto industry. Prepare yourself. We also have 60% of total users on OpenSea are on Polygon. Let that sink in. Polygon is now becoming the place to trade NFTs, but they're not the only place here. We have FTX US is now listing NFTs where you can make your own NFTs on FTX. Very interesting here, a centralized exchange uh, way to do this. And they're saying that they'll all be cross-chain on ETH and Soul. Very interesting play here, another big brain play by SBF. You got to love this guy. He just never stops. And that's why FTT token, uh, which is, of course, the token for FTX exchange, is probably undervalued, given that Sam is probably going to take over the world and put it under FTX's umbrella. And finally, we have Andre Kronia coming back to the world with a project called Loot and Rarity. Now, this project essentially is trying to solve the problem with loot, where loot, essentially what I covered the last week, ended up becoming so expensive that to buy a bag of loot is just astronomical. It's like 15 ETH is the floor price. That's just completely ridiculous to have 60 grand be the entry price to a gaming ecosystem. Essentially, the long and the short of this is that instead of having the base assets like the loot get so wildly expensive, what you're going to have is essentially loot is free to mint. Anyone can mint loot and that it's about what you do with it. And that if you level up and work on your loot, you can increase the value of it and you can claim this gold and the gold will be more like a stable coin. It's not like a speculative asset. It's a really interesting uh, concept he has here. He has rarity gold with a twist uh, and loot and rarity. It's a very interesting interesting project here. I suggest you read up on it. Again, Andre is the king of experiments and experiments are what crypto and NFTs love the most. So definitely something that you should have on your radar as I think it's an interesting approach to solve the game theory that is essentially prices out new people from these expensive NFT ecosystems. And when you price people out, you can't reach mass adoption. That's the biggest issue. Finally, I wanted to give a shout out here. Um, I brought this up. I said, you know, why don't we do like lobby DAO or something like that where we raise money uh, to lobby the government to understand crypto better. Uh, and universe.xyz did uh, lobby lobsters here and they raised $4 million uh, for lobbying efforts in DC. Hats off to them. I absolutely love this. Uh, we just need to educate our politicians as we're hearing dangerous and misinformed, completely uninformed opinions coming out of Washington, DC. And this stuff affects the future of our crypto ecosystem. It's that time again. It's time for Coinless. It's time for low cap gems. It's time for literally astronomical gains in your portfolio. And if you guys are excited for that, then all you have to do is subscribe because I'm going to be feeding them to you as easily as I can. Again, when I see opportunities in the market, I literally can't control myself. I need to give them to you guys. So if you guys are excited for that, smash that like button. And if you're not subscribed with that bell notification on, then you're just going to miss stuff. Simple and plain. So make sure you have that bell notification on as these next few weeks and months are going to be the time to make the good moves that could totally redefine the future of your portfolio. I believe Q4 is going to be absolutely wild. And I told you September was not going to be a red month. I told you it was going to look like an absolutely staggeringly positive month, given the macro, given the crypto ecosystem. Stuff is winding up. It's coiled up like a snake. And I believe that the people who are here, the people who are betting on the right projects are going to have wild, wild astronomical gains. So make sure you're subscribed with that bell notification on. You can find me on Twitter at Elio Trades. I'm even tweeting cryptic stuff, helping you get ahead and stay ahead of the market. And so you're definitely going to want to be following this channel. Channel. Again, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you soon on the next episode.